You only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. May West. Is up welcome to my channel my name is mr. Ryan for those of you that are new welcome I'm gonna be shooting another vlog today and right now I am in Flagstaff Arizona so I'm gonna go check out one of the local national parks in the area and you guys are gonna come along with me as I make my way going to New Mexico so let's go Oh well, let's go. And we have made it to Walnut Canyon National Monument here in Flagstaff, Arizona. So we're gonna go check it out. Let's go. All right, we're gonna do the island trail. And when you first come in, you have to check in with the park ranger. So you might need to pay a toll depending on if you have a park pass or not or if you have a tribal id and there's two trails so we're gonna do the most popular one and we're gonna go ahead and check it out so let's go and just a little information before you go there are 736 stairs to complete on the 0 0.9 mile round trip on the island trail Stay hydrated and take breaks. So, let's go ahead and explore out. Alright, we got our first plaque here. Home for all, you are standing at the edge of a biological hotspot. A concentrated area of plants and animal productivity. Within these deep, tight, water-carved menders is an extraordinary plant diversity along with a rich assortment of wildlife habitat. See, we're right here, and there's different variations of different areas where plant life and animal life is. So the blue one is the Arizona black walnut, which is over here, and the prickly pear cactus, which is right over here, number four. Number two is the Mexican spotted owl, which is way over here. And number five is the mountain strawberry. That's a plant. That's right over here. And number three. Mountain lion, number three, <laughs> number five, I meant, and then number three. So, yeah, pretty cool. Pretty nice view, too. There are many plaques here. They basically all say the same thing, but I'm going to read a few, and this is one of the ones I'm going to read. Cliff Homes and Canyon Life. As recently as the mid-1200, families lived, worked, and played in Walnut Canyon, tending crops on the tr rim, traveling to gather food, and collecting water from the canyon bottom were part of the daily routine. It may be difficult to imagine living here, constant negotiating this, constantly navigating this rugged terrain. Our motorized lives make it easy to forget that. Throughout most of history, people's existence was much more physical. And right here. Walnut Canyon's farming community flourished between the 1125 to 1250. By this time, people across the southwest were united by corn, cultivating, and village life. But their architecture, pottery, and tools differ across space and time. Archaeologists use these differing traits which occurred in patterns on landscape to describe such labeled culture tra traditionals a labeled cultural tradition such as ancestral Babylonian and Sinawa 
Walnut Canyon with its compact villages of adjoining rectangular room block called Pueblos by the Spanish and plain brown pottery lies within the heart of this Inawan tradition. So yeah, that's pretty cool. That's how it looked. And from up here you can see the you can see the the ruins. I don't think we can get as close as we can, but you can see a good view from up here. Pretty cool. Right off the trail says do not enter. And from here, you can see some of the ruins. Another plaque, Tension and Harmony. With its steep and sheer walls, Walnut Canyon provided home building advantages along with controlled access. Living here, people were situated to monitor their world. This was not uncommon. Most villages of the time had some form of passive defense and line of sight communication. Horizontal ledges served as pathways connecting home to home such as those visible across the canyon game trail, natural breaks, and side canyons were the avenues linking the rim to the canyon floor. People also built trails completed with graded switchback. So yeah, this is kind of the depiction of what it would be like. And as you can see, the connecting trails and people were living up here. So it also served as a lookout to keep an eye on everyone who was at the bottom and who was coming in and out of the trail. That's pretty cool. And you can start to see the, the ruins from right across from where I'm standing. And here's a little bit of a quote. A stratum of rock softer than those above have been hollowed out by the action of time. The overhanging cliff made a roof 200 feet thick. The hard stratum was everlasting floor. Thus the houses stood along in a row like a building in a city block or like a barricade. Willa Catherine describing the visit to Walnut Canyon in a song of the lark, 1912. Hmm. But yep, that was the plaque, Tension and Harmony. You can hear people up there coming down. So it's like really quiet and you can really hear people. So let's carry on. And we got us another plaque coming by the trail right beside the cliff. And it says, migration is not abandonment. Walnut Canyon was once filled with the sounds of a busy community as families hunted, planted and harvested with seasons. Children were born, grew up, and raised children of their own. They were neither the first nor the last to use the value of what the canyon has to offer. But they left behind their greatest legacy. When they move on, they did not give up their responsibilities to care for this ancestral village and left those behind. Sites were, re sites were and are revisited by descendants. Prayers are still offered. Plants are still ritually gathered. Walnut Canyon was and is a place that resonates with life. And right here, where people stopped and built homes are all sacred places. No matter if they pass on, the people who couldn't travel stayed in the homes. Their spirits are there in all the sites. All the sites are sacred to us. A Zuni tribal member. And here's a picture of, you know, generations upon generations and as it says you know some tribal members still come here to remember their ancestral ancestral lineage and how their ancestors used to live here pretty cool as i was walking what caught my eye also was the rock formation you see it's kind of slanted and it looks like 
dorsal fins on a dolphin. Pretty cool. And the color is different too. And another pack. <clears throat> Departure. Despite all it had to offer, in time Walnut Canyon became a different place for farmers to live. Drier, colder conditions met crops failures met crop failures. Most people and more people and diminished resources met nutritional stress, disease and conflict. However, these stressful times brought new means of coping. By twelve fifty people joined other others in bigger villages to the south and east where archaeological evidence suggests new beliefs and rituals arose. And right down here it says Hopi tradition holds that Walnut Canyon was simply one step in a larger journey and ultimately not the final destination for these people. Well said. And let's read this really quick. Many reasons are given for clan migration and Hopi traditional history, including drought, famine, cold water, disease, warfare, and natural disasters. However, from a Hopi perspective, the primary reasons for migration is all the fulfillment of a spiritual covenant. The religious intention of Hopi migration receives scant at receives scant attention in most archaeological reconstructions of the past. So what they said right here was pretty cool. That it was part of a long, larger journey and ultimately not the final destination for these people. I think personally that's true for all of us that one big step for us in life is not the final journey. Pretty cool. All right. We're at another plaque. And it says, What happened here? A number of rooms in Walnut Canyon like this one were destroyed by visitors who came armed with shovels and left with souvenirs. An acceptable, even promoted practice during the late 1800s. Meanwhile, while other, vis <laughs> while other visitors and local city citizens so moved by this canyon and its cliff dwellings and outraged by the looting lobbied for federal protection. On November 1930, 1915, President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed and established of Walnut Canyon National Monument. So yeah, those were the people that looted the area. And it's like many rooms right here. So I'm guessing there's like a lot of things here. And people looted it. Here's more older pictures of it. And right here, <clears throat> let's read this quote. It is very dusty work to dig for relics. We dug for hours or more and found corn stalks, corn cobs, and an abundance of bean gourds, nuts, reeds, arrows, bowstrings, coarse cloth with a child's handle, and a measuring stick with notches at irregular intervals, smoothly worn sticks of hardwood, bone needles, a fish line, soapweed needles, broken pottery, etc. In visiting other dwellings, we added these relics and came away heavily laden. And right here. One woman's account of her trip to Walnut Canyon as reported in San Francisco, Cali, 1980. So people did take things from here and you can hear this lady bragging about it. And right here, how our thinking has changed. These sites are part of living cultures and deserve our respect. Today, removing or digging for relics is illegal. Sitting or leaning on walls can cause irreplaceable damage. So yeah. Don't lean on the walls and don't take shit. And there's more of the, the rooms right there, right across the way. Which is pretty cool. Right 
And by the way, the whole trail is paved and narrow, so make room for people if they're walking by and be courteous, you know. And these are the cave homes on the side of the cliff. Of course, I'm not going to go inside, but really close to the trail and be respectful, everyone. talk I bet they have a lot of stories another plaque pretty cool an efficient design. Overhanging ledges protect home. Blah, blah, blah. Overhanging ledges protected rooms from snow and rain. The shaded. <laughs> Man, I'm just stumbling over my words today. Overhanging ledges protected rooms from snow and rain and shaded them during summer months. Six walls of stone and mud insulated them from harsh winds and retained essential heat in winter. Small doors were covered with animal skins, mats, cotton cloth, or sticks woven together. Air entered at the bottom, circularly, circled past a fire, and carried most of the smoke out a hole above the door. So that is what it's talking about. Air would come through the small hole, fire would start. And then all the smoke would circulate through the air um, room out through the top of the hole. So that's why it explains why the walls in the back are black. Because very smart design. And you can see it too because the holes right there and on top of the walls up here are black. Pretty ingenious design. And right here. These fully enclosed rooms are now home to many small rodents that carry deadly diseases. Please protect yourself by remaining outside. So they'll go inside. So yeah, it's pretty cool. A picture depicting what it, what they think it looked like or what it used to look like. Pretty cool. Really nice view too. The quest for water, and of course, water has always been essential for Native Americans, and especially everyone, but we always emphasize that water is life. During the spring thaw, snow melted rubble, blah, blah, blah. during the spring thaw, snow melt rumbled through the narrow passage below you. Water flowed again during the summer monsoon. Shaded pools held precious water after the flow embedded. Walnut Creek was the lifeblood of the community. Still, people had to store large quantities of water for dry months. They likely supplemented their supply by packing snow into large pots and collecting runoff from overhanging cliffs. Women and children probably had the task of retrieving water from the creek. Do you think exchange stories jokes and gossip with neighbors before heading out <laughs> so yeah that's what it was like down here so i'm guessing way down there into the valleys where all the water would run off and people would climb down there and gather water and you can tell it rained here a lot by the rocks too And there's the visitor center, way up there. And we're just about done with the the miniature hike. So it's basically a wrap around the whole mountain. So yeah, pretty cool. I'm 
almost touching the top. Pretty cool though. And we are out of here. And <laughs> I was at almost touched the top, so that was pretty cool. So just like the plaque said, you can see more ruins right across the way. We got ourselves another plaque. Problem solving. Time has worn away details that once made these rooms complete. Still, bits of evidence tell us people devise ways to make their homes comfortable, durable, and suitable for changing circumstances. Right here. Regular replastered of outside walls kept moisture out of wall sound. Moisture. <laughs> Regular replastering of walls kept moisture out and walls sound. Okay, that's what I meant to say. That's what I meant to say, people. Right here. Inside walls were plastered too, making the room well sealed and a bit brighter. Notice the smoke blackened walls inside the, this room. Perhaps from warming fires, but fires was also used to fumigate and harden the clay. Pretty interesting. And right here. Rooms were added as families grew or storage needs increased. Some rooms in Walnut Canyon show a surprising degree of remodeling at various times, suggesting generations of reuse. So basically, people would pass down their homes and rooms to generations. Layers of clay turned uneven bedrock ledges into smooth leveled room floors. As floors wore, new layers were simply applied over time. The clay floors have all eroded in these rooms. So over time, they would put clay plaster over the floors and make it comfortable for themselves, you know? So right here, modern solution. Look at the overhanging above you. With this particular room blocked, rain and snow melt dripped off the rocks and fell on or near the front walls. After the surface plas platter, blah, blah, blah. after the surface plaster eroded, water seeped into the walls and eroded the mortar between the stones. So right there. You wrote it between the stones. Let me see. There we go. That's what it's talking about. And right here. We don't know if the residents devised a way to redirect water away from the walls, but you can see our solution. The worm-like features fixed to the rock created new drip lines further out of the wall, which reduce direct erosion. Artificial silicone drip lines are an inexpensive and non-damaging preservation technique. It's a drip line right there. Huh. The front walls of these rooms have received extensive repairs over the years. No original mourner remains. All that you see here includes fingerprints. It's modern. Oh, okay. That's what it's talking about. The artificial drip line. Okay, okay, okay. For a while there, I was like, what the hell are they talking about? <laughs> but I, okay, I see it now. Pretty cool. Very informative here. Let's carry on. The perfect shelter. For each room tucked into this rock, a clove, nature provided the back wall, floor, and leak-proof ceiling. No excavation was needed. Builders simply laid up unshaped blocks of limestone for walls and enclosed the front and opened their doorway to the canyon. Here, only two walls remain. So this could have been like someone's suite right here. Not sharing a room with anyone. Man, this would have been my place right here. Not sharing a room with anyone, just having a single room to myself. Pretty cool. All right, that was an awesome 
time hanging out at Walnut Canyon, but now I gotta make my way to Gallup, so let's go. How can I dream if I All right, I'm outside Twin Arrows by the gas station Chevron, and I wanted to stop by to give this a try. Apparently everyone says it's the bee's knees, and I thought I'd give it a try. So let me give it a try really quick and see what it tastes like. Mmm, man. It tastes like cherry syrup, like really hardcore, but you can really taste the lemonade too at the same time. Mmm, really good. There's more in there, but maybe on my way coming back, I'll try a different one. But so far, I like the cherry lemongrass. Pretty good, pretty good. So, let's go. Dang! So I am in Winslow, Arizona, and standing on the corners right over there. But I've seen all these stickers right here. And you know what's missing from all these stickers? My sticker, so I'm gonna put my sticker right over here. Let's see. Slap this bad boy right here. Oh shit. <laughs> I put it on there wrong. But yes, my sticker's right here. Oh man, it has a bubble in there. Dang it. I was trying to slap it on real cool, but that did not happen. So. My sticker's right here on standing on the corner, everyone. I guess. Dang, look who I'm going live with. What's up? And look at everyone on the live. Everyone who wants to say hi to my vlog, say hi. You guys be nice and say hi to Ryan. Dang, look at all those people. Look at all those guys we got on there today. Ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> 